Hi everybody, so we're going to look at calculating the calorie requirement in a carbohydrate appropriate diet, which is basically our, mo our most moderated carb approach. Uh, it's not the high fat, low carb paradigm that we may want to have if we want to encourage extreme leanness or if we want to encourage higher levels of fat adaptation for athletes or for people with metabolic or other health, health disorders. But it is a very appropriate nutrition plan that's going to work for most people most of the time. And I've seen uh, much improved levels of fat adaptation just from doing a diet like this or quantifying a diet like this where the carbohydrates are now appropriate to the activity level. And that's really the key. As we've talked about, there's no good reason to have a huge amount of carbohydrate if it is not appropriate to activity level because carbs are basically fuel in the body. They're not providing for the same structural components that we're getting from proteins and fats. So here we see our basic client calorie calculator, which is a carb appropriate calorie calculator. This is version two and it includes some estimations of body fat just in case you haven't measured your client's body fat or they don't know what their body fat is. So here we're going to uh, plug in some figures. We're gonna look at the athlete that was the, the sample case in the uh, level one certification course. So we're just gonna go for a 34 year old male here, height 178 with a body weight of 75 kilos. And we immediately see there's some calculations done automatically. Uh, estimated body fat percentage there of 20%, relatively high, that would be slightly outside, I would consider outside the athletic norm. So we're gonna bring that down a little bit. This athlete we're gonna consider to be a lot leaner at let's say 11%. So you can use your, your judgment too, but if you don't have an idea of what body fat is gonna be or you haven't had that measure, like I say, you can just use that estimated body fat percentage. What we'll shoot across to now is the activity factors. And the athlete that was mentioned in the case study would be uh, is a jiu-jitsu athlete doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, what I consider to be an anaerobic sport there, doing that at least three times a week or three hours a week. So this is a weekly amount that we're putting in here. And also doing some heavy weight training around twice a week and perhaps a, um, you know, a CrossFit session of some sort which could be considered depending on the workout it could come into the calorie factor for say moderate cardio high intensity cardio or even another anaerobic sports activity there so the average is probably around the anaerobic sport mark so we're going to up that just slightly as well to take care of all the activity factors in terms of exercise that this athlete will be putting away in a week what that leaves us is with some figures of indicative calorie requirements for either body fat loss, lean body mass, which is the maintenance of muscle tissue, perhaps getting a little bit leaner over time as well, and also for gaining mass. So let's assume this athlete doesn't want to put on any weight, wants to perhaps become a little bit leaner, maybe put on a little bit of muscle, but not really much, basically staying the same weight and fueling all they need for their activity. So we're gonna stick here with around 2,700 calories, just rounding that up slightly. The desired number of meals, this athlete, let's say they want to be eating about four meals a day, which is a, a good standard for a lot of athletes. You know, I think we, we can get away from the idea that athletes need to be eating, you know, seven, eight, nine times a day. It's not, it's not justified. It's not justified in the research. Various athletes of various types, depending on the calorie requirement and their level of metabolic efficiency, in other words, their level of fat versus carb adaptation, are going to require vastly different amounts of meals. It's going to be quite individual and you know it can range between one two three up to four five six seven eight nine it doesn't really matter too much the key is quality but let's look at around four meals a day being a good amount there so when we plug that in we start to see some indicative calorie requirements here with amounts of protein carbohydrates fats you can see it's relatively balanced on a carb appropriate plan and we're also just going to jot in here some indicative post-training nutrition meals. We're not gonna worry about anything during training at this stage because he's probably not training hard enough for long enough to justify during training meals or during training nutrition. But certainly after training, given that this athlete wants to remain pretty much where he is, possibly get a little bit leaner, we might go for an amount of carb similar to his body weight, maybe a little bit lower, 
let's go with body weight at this stage so around 75 grams of carbs over six training sessions in a week and around half that so let's just round down slightly 35 odd grams of protein immediately after training and what we can see here is that we now have an indicative amount of protein per meal carbohydrate per meal fat per meal and also that takes into account how much we're applying immediately after training so doing these calculations we've got a very simple effective way to work out what our athletes require on a day-to-day -day level in terms of total calories the amount of protein carbohydrates and fats and grams per meal and it also takes into account the nutrition that we're preferentially applying immediately after training or potentially during training if we so wish.